Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at a study that examines one of the most persistent ideas in strength training. And this is the idea that you need to lift heavy weights to grow muscle, especially those powerful type two muscles that are responsible for size and strength gains. Now, most of us have been taught that the heavier loads are essential for hypertrophy because they're better at recruiting those high threshold motor units. But is that really the case? In this study from Morton and colleagues, the researchers went deeper than just surface level EMG readings that we often hear about in studies. They used muscle biopsies to see what's happening inside the muscle, and their findings could completely change how you think about training to failure. So let's dive in. The conventional wisdom is pretty clear. Lifting heavy weights recruits more muscle fibers, especially those type two fibers, which are harder to activate, but highly responsive to growth. This idea is often backed by research using surface electromyography or EMG, which shows increased electrical activity during heavier lifts. But here's the catch. EMG doesn't directly measure muscle fiber activation, it measures electrical signals. And more EMG activity doesn't always translate to more effective hypertrophy stimulus. In other words, stronger signal doesn't necessarily mean better muscle growth. At the same time, previous studies, including some from this very research group, have shown that lifting lighter weights to failure can lead to similar hypertrophy outcomes as heavier loads. These findings are often explained by the size principle, which is a foundational concept in exercise physiology. It suggests that as fatigue builds, the body recruits larger, higher threshold motor units, regardless of how heavy the weight is to start with. So the main takeaway here is maybe it's not just about how heavy you lift that matters, but how hard you push. So what was the purpose of this study? Well, this study had two primary aims. First, the researchers wanted to examine whether training a load, either light or heavy, and repetition tempo, normal versus slow, influenced muscle fiber activation as measured directly through fiber type specific glycogen depletion. Essentially, this is how much each type of fiber was metabolically taxed during the training session. Second, they explored how surface EMG readings aligned with the direct measures of muscle activation and whether key anabolic signaling markers, and these are the biological signals that drive muscle growth, were influenced by these same training variables. So let's take a look at the methods. The researchers recruited 10 recreationally trained young men, all with at least two years of consistent lifting experience. Each participant performed four different unilateral leg extension protocols, one for each leg spread out over two separate visits. The conditions were heavy training with normal tempo, heavy training with slow tempo, light training with normal tempo, and light load training with slow tempo. The heavy load training was set at 80% of the participants one rep max, and the light load was set at 30%. Normal tempo used a standard 1-1-1 cadence, meaning one second for the eccentric, one second for the pause between reps, and one second for the concentric, while the slow tempo was increased to a 3-1-3 tempo, meaning there was much more time under tension. Each condition involved performing three sets to failure, and the researchers collected muscle biopsies before and one hour hour after the training session to assess glycogen depletion in both type 1 and type 2 muscle fibers, which is a validated method for determining which fibers are actively being used. They also measured anabolic signaling and monitored surface EMG for comparison. Despite some fairly massive differences in the number of reps, time under tension, and total training volume across these conditions, the central finding was very clear. Both type 1 and type 2 fibers were activated in all four of the conditions, and there were no significant differences between fiber activation, between the light or heavy loads, or between fast or slow tempos. So in other words, whether the participants lifted heavy or light, fast or slow, if you train to failure, you're activating muscle fibers that matter most. As expected, surface EMG readings were higher during the heavy load conditions. However, and this is key, those elevated signals did not correlate with fiber-specific glycogen depletion, 
levels of fatigue, or the activation of anabolic signaling pathways. Interestingly, integrated EMG, which is the total signal accumulated throughout the entire set, was actually higher in the light load conditions, but this is likely due to the greater number of repetitions required to reach failure. Yet still, more EMG didn't equate to more muscle fiber activation. Now, when it comes to anabolic signaling, it followed a similar pattern. Now, if you're wondering what this means, anabolic signaling refers to key molecular markers like the phosphorylation of P70S6K and others like ERK that indicate that your body's gearing up for muscle growth. In this study, those markers increased across all training conditions. But here's the catch. No one condition was superior. So in short, whether you lifted heavy or light, fast or slow, the internal signaling for muscle growth responded similarly, as long as you pushed those sets to failure. What does this mean for you and I? Well, these findings support a very powerful idea, and that is that the intensity of effort, not the amount of weight, is what determines muscle fiber recruitment when sets are taken to failure. This lines up with the size principle of motor unit recruitment that I mentioned earlier, and it provides evidence that lifting light weights can still activate those high threshold motor units when fatigue is sufficient. Now, importantly, the study also casts doubt on the usefulness of surface EMG for assessing muscle activation, especially during high fatiguing training. Just because EMG amplitude goes up, it doesn't mean that you're activating more type two fibers, at least as seen in this case, when you are comparing high load and low loads taken to failure. What's also notable is the fact that the speed or rep tempo didn't matter either. Slowing down the reps increased time under tension, but it didn't enhance fiber activation or anabolic signaling. Now, this doesn't mean that slow reps are useless. They can still be a useful tool for technique or control, but from a hypertrophy standpoint, they don't appear to offer any added benefits if you're already training to failure. So the big takeaway here is that training load and the tempo or speed of your reps doesn't determine muscle fiber activation when the sets are taken to failure. Whether you're using 30% of your one rep max or 80% of your one rep max, both type one and type two fibers are recruited and the anabolic signaling pathways associated with muscle growth respond the same. So guess what? That's great news because it gives lifters a lot more freedom in how they train. If joint stress or fatigue is resting unsustainable, you can still grow effectively with lighter loads as long as you're training hard and pushing close to failure. And if the idea of high rep sets and chasing a pump turns you off, well then no problem. You can still use heavier loads at any tempo and achieve similar muscle growth. And while EMG can be a helpful research tool, it's not a reliable stand-in for what's actually happening within the muscle, especially under fatigue. This study is a great reminder that real adaptation comes from effort and fatigue, not from chasing arbitrary numbers or signals. Now, what this does not mean is that EMG is useless in all situations and scenarios, and I have seen that take on social media as well. What it simply means is that EMG amplitude may not always perfectly predict muscle growth. So if you're somebody who prefers lighter weights, slower reps, or needs to train around injuries, this study gives you a big green light. As long as you're taking your sets close to failure, you're still activating the fibers that matter most for muscle growth. And the fact that low load training continues to demonstrate similar muscle growth adaptations over eight to 12 week timeframes suggests, or at least to me, the concerns about excessive fatigue from lighter training loads are probably overstated. And that's another popular claim floating around on social media lately, but the current evidence doesn't seem to support it. And perhaps that's another deeper dive for another video. So don't get caught up in load obsession. Heavy isn't the only path to making gains. And yes, I know that this might ruffle some feathers. So if you're tempted to jump into the comments with strong opinions, feel free to bring evidence along with your emotions. Let's keep that conversation informed, not reactive. And for everybody else, the real takeaway is this, focus on training with consistent effort and intent, and that is what drives progress. So. Who's planning on using lighter loads in the gym from now on? Or are you sticking with the heavy stuff? Either way, it's great to know that you have options. Anyway, guys, if you found this breakdown helpful, go ahead and give it a like, subscribe to my channel, share it with your training buddy, and feel free to drop me a comment below. I appreciate you, and I'll see you in my next video.